uh, we're to an NGO seminar session, and today we're going to have um, a lecture uh, about Nextflow. Um, but before that, we also have a, a very exciting and we're very happy to uh, let you know that we are organizing a, a virtual NGS symposium. Um, uh, it's an uh, event aimed at uh, NGS, com NGS school community and uh, at people uh, just like most of you who are just starting in the bioinformatics and it's a great opportunity to uh, maybe present your work in the form of a, of a short online virtual talk. So we have the uh, abstract submission page already open uh, and you can check out on our website and on our social uh, social media channels. Uh, we have a couple of speakers actually already confirmed in the area of, of, of computational genomics uh, and bioinformatics, but more of the, more, uh, more, more than that to uh, follow soon. So make, make sure to follow our uh, announcement on social media and on our website. So coming back to the, today's workshop, we have uh, Edgar Garriga. He's a soon to graduate, I think, PhD student in the uh, Comparative Bioinformatics Group at Center for Genomic Regulation in Barcelona, Spain. And this is actually a, a, a group in which the whole Nextflow project has started. So uh, Edgar has extensive experience in what, uh, working as using and developing uh, Nextflow pipelines. And he's a great person to introduce you to this uh, for you, maybe new, maybe not uh, work for management system. Uh, apart from his uh, regular bioinformatics work, Edgar is also uh, very much doing very little uh, humanitarian work and he spent uh, recently an amount of time uh, helping the refugees in Greece and Libya. So he's a uh, very, has a very interesting hobbies as well. Uh, and without further ado, I will head over the mic, virtual one, to Edgar. Um, and let me start the workshop. If you can share your screen, and I hope that will not, there will be no problems with that now. Yeah, sorry. I think that I was kicked out. Uh, let me share the screen. Can you see that? I think so. Hmm. Yes, yes, I can see that. Okay. Okay. Uh, then today I want to present or to to give an introduction about the uh, next flow. Uh, and as I thought, I'll just to make a bioinformatics great again. It never have been so great as as now in in the middle of a worldwide pandemic, where almost all of us have to work from home, and we we can have these these issues. Uh, uh, let me check. Everything go. Yeah. If we have uh, these issues of uh, technological problems, it's not the same work running on local or, or in the cluster. Then to start, why Nextflow? Why uh, my group decide to to build this this tool? Because has been shown on on science that there is a lot of problems of reproducibility. What do we mean about reproducibility? Like when you make an experiment, when you make a, an article and you, you prove one, one the theoretical uh, problem, if someone else wants to, to reuse this, this pipeline, this experiment, or to check if it's uh, well done, it's almost impossible to, to do in the same way, to, to run in the same environment. And uh, a lot of articles, this one, for example, has been shown that to, to replicate the results of a typical paper, it took like almost 300 hours, like it's two months just to reproduce the exam results of, of a regular uh, paper, of a regular experiment. Then uh, why it's so difficult? Now, I, we ha I have a lot of uh, slides with text, but at the end we will make this hands-on with kind of a tutorial and it will be clear. But why it's so difficult to reproduce the a pipeline and analysis? The first, because we ha we have a lot of dependencies like binary tools, compilers, libraries. Like as, as we can see every day, like now it, for me it was a bit of a mess to connect with uh, in Discord. Then we have this kind of a software net nature of uh, different so uh, operating systems. Uh, it's not the same uh, a Mac or Linux. And now in in the last years of this cloud computing, uh, it's even worse. Like if you want to deploy 
your analysis on Amazon Cloud or Google Google Cloud, you should uh, spend almost one month more to to migrate your analysis from local to to the cloud. Or in your institutions, for example, you you will not be able to run uh, certainly a software due to uh, security reasons. Like you can run some software with a root privileges on your laptop, but your institution will not allow you to run uh, in with root privileges on on the HPC on the on the cluster of your institution. And for example, this is a a, 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 a diagram of a pipeline of uh, Institut uh, Pasteur in France. It's like 70 tasks. 50, 55 external scripts and almost 40 software tools. Like if you want to deploy this on your on your institution, on your cluster, on your laptop, it will be like more than two months for sure. And that's the reason why we decided and we saw that there is a need of a kind of reproducible reproducibility uh, improvement. And finally, just to to handle to, to needle this necessity like to to go through through the through the nature biotech uh, paper that w the last uh, PhD student realized that the same analysis running on different um, Linux versions gives different uh, results and if we go nowadays like we can take for example this uh, this figure we can see that if you run on Amazon Linux uh, you have different results from uh, macOS like Amazon or, or Mac or with Docker. Like it's, it's nothing, like you said, there is a difference of one uh, gene annotation or three, it's not so big. But if we are talking nowadays, for example, with um, this uh, coronavirus, if we make a, a test and in Mac, we, give, we have a positive, and if we run the same analysis and on Linux we have negative, we have an issue, like it can happen. Then this uh, go through like after three years of, of work, and thanks to the, the evolution of the technologies uh, with the uh, containers as Docker, we were able to have the same analysis and make it reproducible. Like uh, on this figure, we can see that Amazon and Mac have different results. Like we share almost 95%, 98%, but we have some discrepancies with native. But if we go through uh, Nextflow and Docker, we have the same results. That's what is expected on, on a pipeline of comparative analysis. And yeah more more text at the end uh, next is just a framework to to make to build your your analysis uh, it's a uh, provides a domain specific language i will explain it later but at the end it's it, there are their own grammar you have to learn how to uh, write pipelines in nextflow and it allows to deploy in multi-platforms like uh, as i told you like on your cluster or on local or in the cloud and finally we uh, you can build on containers like docker singularity or or conda how it works in the center we have nextflow and then nextflow is polyglot what i want to say with polyglot that you can use whatever language that you want you can use bash r uh, python perl whatever language are you using on your own scripts you can embed insert inside nextflow then you can build your own environment with a with the container of Docker, Singularity, or Conda. It will allow us to run everywhere uh, with this reproducibility feature. Then we are able to use this version control of GitHub or Bitbucket. Like you can run a specific version of the pipeline on the time thanks to the commit versioning of uh, GitHub. And the most interesting and the most part, uh, the most evolutionary part is this uh, executor. Like, where do you run your analysis? Like, just changing a, a line, you can move from local to Amazon Cloud uh, easily. Or maybe you are now working on on one institution, let's say CRG here in Spain. Just if you move to another institution in in France or in Sweden, you just need to change this executor parameter to the one of your of your institution and you will be able to run the, the pipeline with, with any issue. Then the key features, as I told you, is this uh, DSL, like you have to learn some keywords. Then it makes parallel your pipeline uh, directly. Like you don't need to care and you, you don't need to, to think about how to parallelize the, the flow. Like if someone uh, tried to make a parallel the script or the analysis, you'll realize that it's a nightmare like this um 
um, taking care of the of the blocks that you can have like the reading and the writing process on the same section of the disk. Nextflow is doing everything this for, for you and very transparent, like it's not uh, so complicated. Then it's there is support for these different cluster platforms and this is growing every day because people in the community are like uh, building more cluster platform support for, for each institution. And finally, just uh, this task isolation, like you can run each task on a different environment. You can run one process with Docker and another one with Conda and the third one with uh, Singularity. Like uh, it's, there it's very split, the, this, the, the tasks are very isolated. And maybe the not the best one is that it's common line oriented. There is no graphic user interface, but it's changing. And we have now a kind of a, a, a small piece of software that provides some graphic user, uh, user interface. Then the pipeline is defined is, uh, in a declarative manner. Like you can, you have to think about uh, pipe, pipes, uh, real pipes of water, like you have to put, to plug an input uh, pipeline, uh, an input pipe and an output pipe and just connect all the process of, of your script with these pipes. A process can be, uh, for me, it's like it's a process, it's, uh, it's like well-defined, but for new people it can be defined a kind of a function, like each function of your script will be a process. And each process can be um, uh, run in parallel. It means that if you only have one process, you your your execution will not have uh, so much uh, advantage of nextflow if you are able to split this pipeline in different process you will run all the process like at the same time in parallel and nextflow will take care of the dependencies between these uh, these pipelines and let's go to start uh, learning how nextflow works to define a process we need the name like we need to define this process then the name in this case is four and then as easy and declare input output and the script block of what we want to run here we have an example as an input we will take a file called uh, sample.fasta this will be an internal name it's not external later i will explain how from this a keyword to fasta file that will be the pipe that gives us uh, the input the input will be fasta files and we are calling sample.fasta and the output is the same file will be sequence.txt this will be our output and we will put in this pipe results that uh, results underscore file and that's what we will run we are uh, calling this uh, getting this sample that fasta that we define here we get it here as an input we make the blast protein and then this the output sequence.txt but as a, a real script will look like this we have uh, this uh, pipeline input pipe okay this uh, sequence it's a channel from <coughs> sorry this sample.fasta file we create a channel called sequence and on this process blast we get this uh, this channel sequence is the same we make the blast and the output uh, we generate this uh, channel blast results and it's this file okay this file is defined here and this in.fasta it's here it means that we can have the name that we want, but it has to match. And if we if we want another process, we can have this one, process align. We we get this blast results uh, channel is this one. Like we just get the output of the blast, and we make the the alignment. That will be just for the sample that faster. But I told you that uh, Nextflow takes uh, it uh, paralyzed uh, easily, and it works like this. If we make this channel instead of the sequence.fasta, we make this uh, pattern, this uh, start.fasta, it will grab all the FASTA files of, of the folder, the uh, slash data, and it will run in parallel as many uh, process as files we have here in the in the slash data. And as 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 far as as quick as it finished, it will start the second one. Like it, when we have one one output already from the uh, file one dot fasta, it will call the this align on this file one dot fasta. Meanwhile, the others are still running on on the blast, and when it finishes, it will just go through the align process. And 
Mm, then uh, uh, we can use this called templates. Instead of writing a lot of uh, code on the script section, we can call templates. It means that we can have a kind of a share uh, code or like kind of to to make your your pipeline easier to read. You can have a template that the name the same name it's easy to understand. And how it works is like we have this align slash underscore method and it will call different files, different templates. And this one is for example an, an example that you have you run you're running the same code, like this is template uh, rec align underscore clustalo dot sh and this is spam size h. But on the on the main script it's easier to read. Like you know that you are you are calling uh, this template and you don't have this kind of three thousand lines of of code on the main on the main script. And you can kind of um, how do you say instead of because if not you, here you have to put an if else for example. And to maintain this is a, is a mess. Then with this template you can split the the runs or the the scripts for the, for each uh, align method let's say. And another important feature or, or piece of Nextflow is a configuration file. That's uh, a file that you you define how to run uh, Nextflow and and what to what to run. And it's very important or very yeah very important to have it uh, clean and clear because if you have clean and clear uh, configuration file, you can just switch from local to HPC or to cloud just changing one 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 word. But on this configuration file, you can define the executor that it, it is the where do you run the, the code on the local or on the cloud. The container, like if you're running Docker, Singularity, or, or Conda, and which one. Then the HPC parameters, like if you're running on, on a cluster of your institution, you will have a, diff, a, a specific queues, or you will have a memory uh, restrictions or CPU restrictions. Here you can define it. Then you can define the the input input parameters, and finally the profiles. It's like if you want, you can define everything here inside, or you can have profiles to define for each uh, for each file. I will show you later an example. That's an example of a configuration file. This is the the profile that I that I use on on CRG because I think it's clear to to, to see. Uh, uh, I define in a process. For all the process, the executor CRG, and then task attempt is when I start in with one, like number one. If the cluster or my job just finished with an error, this task attempt increased by one. And I, as you can see here, like the queue of my cluster, I have different queues, like the one from my group, the one from long jobs, and the one from super memory intensive. What I'm doing. Is that the first time, the first uh, four times I'm running on my group job, on my group queue? If it's not working because my group queue is uh, too small, I'm just jumping to the long one. And if not, I'm just going to the memory. And it's automatically, I like, and I can kind of say, uh, save money to my, to my group or to myself. Because first I start with the free queues, like the cheaper queues. And finally, I, have, I will go to the more expensive. And we can do the same on Amazon. Like on Amazon, it's even more clear. Like you start with small instances, like with with the cheaper in instances. And if you can run the job, that's awesome. It's free for you. But if your analysis needs uh, more CPU intent, then you will go for uh, uh, more expensive instances, and and you will have to to spend more money. But with this definition, you you can save a, a lot of uh, bucks on on the group. And you can go through process, or you can define the process with these, we call it labels. Like you can define each process, each function, as a, I define as a low, medium, high, or long. Like it means that I can have a process that I know that they are very cheap or very quick, and I, I label them as a process underscore low. And it goes just with a, a smaller amount of CPUs or memory or the time. I know that. The time will be no not more than four six hours. If not, something is wrong. I mean that you can uh, define your your um, your pipeline by by executor like where you are running, or inside the the same pipeline you can define different methods requirements. 
and the now it was mm, this is a kind of a new version of Nextflow and new grammar or new uh, approach of Nextflow is PSL2. Let's call it modules, and it's kind of a Lego. The problem of the Nextflow that I explained it to you until now is that if I'm doing an analysis and you are doing a similar analysis, you have to rewrite everything, a copy paste, and we cannot share our uh, our code because uh, one process depends on, on the one be below and the one after. With DSL2, uh, we call it modules, and it's kind of a Lego. You define one process and you can isolate it, and all the members of the group can use the same module, kind of a plug and play. And it's a a, a version of Nextflow. Uh, it's not so so long that it's it's a life. I think it's three four months. And it's a kind of a a good opportunity to learn and to share the coding between the members of the group or the community. The main features of modules is that that you can reuse the code. It's fast implementation because uh, for who of you are doing a PhD, like you have your own main project and then kind of side projects with, uh, on, on the PhD. Then you can just implement your modules and for the new side project, just plug and play the modules. And it's, and it's very easy. And for me, was a strong uh, feature of Nextflow because you can develop new pipelines in, in a matter of, of hours. And yeah, at the end is just share is care, like why you need to to recode again or 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 fighting from scratch when someone else before you already have this pain. Kind of a, this is Stack Overflow uh, forum that almost all of us copy paste and change what we need. You can have this uh, modules pool where you can pick the 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 model that you need and make the change that you need for for your analysis. But all the hard job is already done. Then we have a Nextflow tower. That's the kind of the graphic user interface that we have. It started as a as a, as a tool to to check your your runs and to have kind of a resume of what you are doing. But now th there is uh, some features to run your pipelines directly from from the browser. We will see later. Uh, I think it will run. Yeah, that's how Tower looks like. Like you can just sing in on on Tower. Then you you have to define your environment. That's uh, Amazon Cloud. Uh, yeah, that's just an example of of Paolo. That's how easy it's to just deploy a pipeline uh, with with Nextflow Tower. And that's I like this feature because like this kind of a launching pipeline from 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 the cloud because nowadays that almost all of us or a lot of people have to work from remotely like yeah you can go go to the beach or go whatever you have to go a medical appointment and with your with your smartphone you you can run your your analysis yeah already we just launched the pipeline through amazon and it took like 30 seconds, one minute to get the, the pipeline. And here we know uh, the submitted jobs, the running ones, and the succeeded. Later, I will show you uh, a more intensive um, tower. And finally, what I told you, like if someone don't want to fight with the next flow, and it, she said that she's not a developer and there is more uh, well lab people, you have this community, and of course, that they build pipelines and it's kind of uh, ready to run like you have all the things that you need and a, a good documentation and you can run with the same uh, features as Nextflow like you can run whatever you want with you want to run with tower you can run with uh, multiple uh, cluster uh, platforms and all this stuff I, I will share you later the 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 link that's people using Nextflow at the end I, kind of uh, a picture of that it's uh, very broad, like people around the world using Nextflow. And that's the the links from Nextflow, the NF Core, and the tower that we will see later. If you want to get in touch, mm -hmm. Nextflow use Gitter and NF Core uses Slack. And the slides are here. And yeah, that's all. And now uh, we will go to 
to the hands-on uh, project, like tutorial to, to see how Nextflow works. And if you have any doubt, we can, we can discuss it. Let's see <coughs> if I can change. Oh. Share the screen. Change windows. I will go to this one. No life. I think that you can see now the new screen, if I'm not wrong. Uh, you have, that's the, the repository that Ana Maria shared uh, at the beginning of the, of the webinar. But we can, we can follow easily. And, and if you have any doubt, don't, don't doubt on, on writing. Let's see, this is the, the prerequisites of uh, Nextflow. Then like to install Nextflow, it's very, very easy. You need Java, Docker, or Singularity, or Conda. And then just need to, to clone like this. How to, uh, yeah, it just goes through. Uh, yeah, we, OK. This is how you can install uh, Nextflow. It's quite easy, just with a curl uh, call. You go and you just already download Nextflow. And uh, for for a future script, if you want, you can uh, pull this uh, Docker image. But if not, Nextflow will will pull for you automatically. One of the of the beauties of uh, Nextflow working with containers is that it converts, and it's not a Nextflow feature, it's a, do, a Singularity feature, but you can work with a Docker container. And for the ones that didn't fight with Docker already, you cannot run, or usually you cannot run Docker on your cluster, on your HPC, because you need some root privileges and usually institutions doesn't allow to, to run Docker, but you can build your Docker and then convert on the fly Docker to Singularity. It means that you can work on Docker in, in local if you want, but when you run on, on the cluster, you just need to, to change a flag and it will run on, on, on Singularity. Let's start like we, like during this tutorial, yeah, that's what you will, you will learn. First, uh, we will work with this script one. Let's take a look at the script to see how it looks like. Here we have the definition of the parameters. Like we have uh, this params.read, param.transcript.com, and param.multiqc. Uh, when we have this params dot, it's a parameter that you can you can input in the command line. Like uh, if you want to to change this, this is the default value that we we set, but uh, you can change it because it's params dot. Like you can call the script and you can change it. We will see later. But let's see uh, here. Let's run next flow, next flow, run script one. Let's see what happened. Wants to work. I don't know why it's not working. Yeah, here. I don't know if you can see, but it's next one is running. Just the version and then we have this uh, name it's unique for it uh, for its run it will be helpful later to to get the analysis and this is re reads uh, two dots and and the files it's the print that we have we have here one println just printing this this value it's this one but yeah it's just on a start i think that maybe i will go through directly then the yeah, first step, modify the script, adding out there to save. Yeah, it will stay here. I know that it's markdown, but I guess that you can you can follow uh, you can follow markdown because not the the previewer it all goes to the to the top. Let's say we, we are here. Exercise one dot one. It asks to modify the script one and add a new parameter called out there. Okay, it's as easy as uh, params.audio 
slash days did results oh, out there. When we use this base base dir uh, variable, it means that it's taking the the directory, the actual directory of of where where the script nf is is placed. Uh, one second. And uh, if I, I put the params dot out there, I will be able to change. If not, no one outside the scripts will will be able to change it. Okay, that's quite easy. Just make a a, a new variable. As another thing, as you can see here, the grammar you, we have a highlighted thing. It's because uh, Visual Code or Atom has this uh, a plugin for Nextflow, and you can kind of read easily uh, Nextflow code. Uh, okay, that's how you define a new a new uh, a new variable. And second one, modify second one, modify the script to print all the all the parameters using the log info instead of the println. Okay, I have it here. Here we have the parameters, and instead of the println, we we have this uh, log info information for logging for uh, yeah for the log file. And uh, it's quite interesting to to have on all your your scripts. Next flow, I will show you how it looks like. Run solutions sol uno dos. When we run this, like it's kind of a good practice to have this this block with your parameters at the beginning of all your your scripts because you always run with another folder that you don't want it with another data set. And with this, you always have the, the information, like the double check that you're running. Like, I know that I'm taking the, the reads from here. Like, I'm taking these reads. I'm not taking the ones from the test folder. Uh, from the transcript, I'm the same, and the multi QC is the same. And the results are here, are in the solution slash results. They're not anywhere else. And I think it's a good practice and just copy paste and place your your inputs or your parameters to to check that you are you're running it. Then uh, yeah. Let's check uh, screw number two, how it looks like. It looks like this, okay. We have this uh, log info, these results. And now we are converting these uh, transcript terms, like we, in the transcript term, we are giving a path to this transcript term file. And we are converting this file to kind of a next flow file, okay? Then we are using this index process, like index function. To, we, we get this channel that here, and we call salmon. We call salmon to make the index, we can define as a salmon flag the thread, and we input this transcriptom. It's this one from here. Like we have called it here transcriptom. We can call it here, and let's let's try to run it. Next, we'll run script two. Let's see what happens. Like it will fail. It will crash because I don't have salmon on my. On my environmental, on my on my computer, I don't have salmon, and it should crash. And why it's taking kind of uh, so long? Okay, error on the process index. It fails with this error, and then you have why uh, on the command error you have uh, this one. It fails because salmon command not found. Okay, because we download we we. Um, pull uh, the docker before uh, here because we pull the docker before we can run with docker because on uh, because we have defined it here on next flow config that's the file that i showed you before on process.container like that's the content that we want to run we will use this container, nextflow rnsseq. Then running the same 
as before. Like run script to with Docker. It will use Docker, the Docker defined on Nextflow config to run the, the script. Let's say it has it. Now it's running index process, it's running Salmon. Meanwhile, I can explain you this syntax, for example. Okay, we have done. Okay, we run one and it's okay. But I want to explain this, what this means. The star symbol is any, as you know, like any any text, underscore, and then we are taking one or two. Like we are taking any file, underscore, one or two. If we check the, the, the data, we can say that we have got underscore one, got underscore two, liver one, two, lang one, and two. With this uh, pattern, we're saying that it's calling, it's grabbing all the files that has one or two. If we have, for example, only 10, but if we have 10, but we only have to work with the first five, we will go from one to five here and it will just grab the, the five first uh, files of each of, of them. Okay, we run the the index process on my machine without having Salmon installed because we use uh, Docker. <coughs> if, uh, yeah, we can define the the container in the next low config that it was already there. And instead of mm, calling with Docker on the command line, we can have this Docker enable equal true on the config, like on the config file, we can say that Docker enable equal true. That it will mean that it will run with Docker every time. But uh, it's fine. But uh, if you want to run with Singularity, for example, on your cluster, I will avoid this. I will, I will not put this because sometimes you will want to run with uh, with Singularity, and there will there will be a conflict. But we have. Uh, we don't have any conflict right now. I will just keep it safe and you can run it without minus Docker. And if we put resume, it will it will get the cache of, of the execution before and we will not rerun it again. So yeah, exercise 2.1, it's to put this uh, Docker enable true on the next low config. And now uh, let's say that we want to to see the output. Like, can you see here in the results? It's cache. Like, it doesn't didn't run it again. It just used the the run of of the previous uh, runs. And exercise uh, two point two. We want to see the output of the this index dot channel. Let's see what we have on the index, like on this file. Okay. Like we, as, as we have before, we have this channel, transcript term, we just put on Salmon, and the output is this index file that save it on index channel. What we can have is we want to see what is inside. We have index channel that is the output of, of the process dot view. And if we run this, uh, yeah, so, yes. The thing is the minor resume, again, it saves a lot of money if like you're running five aligners, different aligners, and one fails, you can rerun everything again and everything it's, that has cache, it will not compute it again. Okay, now here it's what we have on this view, on the index.channel, we have this file. We have this uh, blah, 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 work, blah, blah, blah. Like we can, can cut it and check what, uh, yeah, my, my mistake. That's what we have. Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but this is what we have inside the, the index channel. All of this is what Salmon provides. And this uh, word uh, direction, it's how NextFlow isolates things. Uh, let me check. 
to run just a part of one, just one process. Yes, like to run just a, a process, you should, uh, if there is no, I'm, I'm just running, uh, contest, uh, answering Ana Maria. If you don't have an input of, uh, sorry, no, input, no. You have the, this one. Let me show you. Uh, I'm using my own script, but I think it's, it's easier. Like, uh, no, not here. One second, please. Uh, modules. Uh, no, it's not this. With modules, you don't need it. It's a uh, Yeah. To run just one one process, we have this when definition. Like when, and it's kind of if else. Like if parameter three is false, you will run this process, generate three. Okay? Because it's catch great after each process, so it's more granular. Uh, Simon, I really, I'm not sure. I think it's a, uh, it's for each process, each task. Like each process has as many tasks as input files, and it's for each task you have one cache uh, folder. And yeah, Ana Maria, you have this uh, one one statement. I like if I'm defining here, let me find it. Yeah, okay, this. Uh, Params evaluate, params homoplasy, and parents metrics, true, false, false. Then I have it here. Uh, I think it's this one. Then uh, this is evaluate. When parametrics, like if parametrics is equal to true, I will run the metrics. If not, I just keep the, the metrics process. And but with modules, you will you will not need it, but if if you run on DSL regular one, that next flow version one, you can use this param uh, with this when. It's very very easy. Like I'm explaining here a lot of things, but uh, a lot of things, uh, a small things. But at the end, uh, next flow documentation and and the and the sun and the um, guitar, like go through the documentation and you have everything. Like you can do whatever you want because on documentation there is a lot of things. Here, yeah, I'm just explaining what I use most and kind of an introduction to you to see, like to realize that things can be easily done on NextFlow. Uh, let me consider that it's possible, but only if you find it in pipeline. For the sake of recording. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, Ana Maria is is asking if we just can run a part of the pipeline and the quest the answer is yes if you are able to if you define this uh this statement of uh, when when you have the when you have to you have this uh, kind of switch like metrics will switch on or off in this process and if metrics is true i will run this process metrics and if it's false i will skip this this process uh, yeah that's okay that's the the view we already have it i can now go through this uh, three work because i don't have three uh, working but i can show you here the structure of of the directory because it used to be yeah that's that's nothing or like kind of auxiliar um a structure of netflow but it can save you a lot of time if we go inside, uh, clear. If we go inside a directory, like uh, a directory of the of the index of the salmon, that's the structure of the files that we have. We have the index folder that I showed you before. Then we have all of these uh, common files, like dot common, because they are uh, occulted, and the exit code and the transcriptome. That's the input that we that we provide. It's a it's a link as you can see as a, the input that we we send. But uh, if we want to see what was already like what was the exact command line that we run, if we have this uh, dot command sh, we have we know what was uh, what was running. Like we know that we run on bash salmon index thread one transcripton dot fa uh, minus e index. That was the exact command line that next run. We can check the log 
like to see what was the log of salmon and, and next load that was the log to the bug and to see what are the errors are like it saves you a lot of time and and it just gives a lot of information and finally the exit code like it's already uh, pumped on next load but yeah exit uh, exit code zero means that everything was was fine and run like maybe once you have more experience you can check the run because here let me see if i can find it uh, like that's kind of the next flow mm, command and somewhere i can i will not find it now but you can see let me see where somewhere you will be able to see the container i cannot find it uh, i have to be uh, yeah, docker run here it is docker run uh, that's what i want to see because uh, and this is the container. Sometimes when you have multiple containers, because you, ca you can have one container per process, like you can have, uh, we will go later, we will see more processes, but you can have one container for process one and one container for process two. You can just mess containers and you can have some errors that you didn't expect it. But here you can, you can see what's going on on, on the call. <coughs> Okay, that's the kind of the three words that they want to explain. Uh, the next one, uh, step three, okay, we're here. Collect and read files by birth. Like we will check now uh, script number three. Okay, this is script number three, the same read transcriptomes and multi QC. Mm, yeah. And what uh, we have to do. It just make the same view that we have before, but on the red pairs, okay? Like we have this red pairs channel. Let's, let's put the view and uh, next flow. And we will see what is inside the this red pairs. One, three, three. Uh, resume now, it's not needed. We will run and we will see what we have inside these, uh, these reads, okay? Uh, another flag that it's not uh, on the on this tutorial is the minus bg. It's minus background. It's useful when you run things on on the cluster if it's not an interactive uh, session. And um, uh, later I will explain you what the everyday like daily life with Nextflow. Here we have the result of this view. As you can see, we have kind of three files, like three objects. This good this one then we have this object like we have another object is this one and this one have two files good one and good two okay that's what we have inside of read uh, per channel let's why we have this good uh, because by default nextflow kind of split the the file name and have the identifier uh, extracted. You can have some kind of a Perl syntax to to get like kind of whatever underscore number as an ID, but by default it's just everything before kind of a special character. But uh, yeah, that's what we seen, and that's the output that we expected. Um, yeah, let's say like let's change now the input like with this minus minus reads it's what i told you that you can change the value of params params dot because we have params dot reads we can have this minus minus reads like on next flow when you have minus minus it's a bit tricky but uh, yeah it, once you get it when you have minus minus is to talk about parameters inside your script and if you have just minus it's a flag of next flow, like minus tower, minus resume, minus BG, it's for next flow. And if you have minus minus, it's for to like input, like kind of to, to pipe things inside next flow. Here, let's see what happens if we change the, the input. Like the input that we have now, it's good, like a good one, two. And we are saying that it's everything one, two. 
as we can see before, we have different uh, tissues, and it just it will print uh, for each tissue. It will make the the pair for us. <coughs> but yeah, this minus minus or minus sometimes just get you a bit uh, a bit strange working. As you can see, next flow for us, like we we don't do anything. We only just give the input as a whatever we have on parameter read and we just make a view. Thanks to Nextflow, let's say, we can just have one group with a liver files, one group from the gut, and one group for the lung. Just because file uh, from file birth make this kind this for us, make this kind of uh, exercise for us. And um, yeah, now uh, instead of having this, uh, equal channel from files per kind of it's a bit uh, easy like easy kind of simple like it's uh, you are not doing a lot of things we uh, three it's three one you can have this 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 thing i just put it here because i want to upload like everything instead of uh, this uh uh, red pairs equal channel from files pairs. What we can have is a channel from uh, param.read. Uh, this view, we don't need it. We can remove it if we want. Uh, set red per, like this and these are equi equivalent. Like it's the same doing like in this way or in this way. I prefer this way because you can, you can put like you should put the kind of like the pattern to make the map. If you want to make a map more more complex, you 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 have to define it here, like kind of a view. You can have the map, blah blah blah. And if you want, we will see that we will need to define another uh, another channel because we cannot use the same channel twice. But step by step, if I run this, like the same that before, we will see that we have the same the same output. It's not nothing different. But with, let me show you what is it. We will see later because we have it here. Let's see. I don't know why it's actually going a bit slow now. The next one is check if exists. Uh, do you see the, the the output is the same from one run to another one because we are doing the same. But now we can define this check if exists. This is interesting because. Sometimes we we use we use here a path, but uh, going through clusters and going through the Amazon bucket, blah blah blah, we just misspell the path or we are running on the local path. Like we 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 put a local path on the cluster and it's not finding anything. That's why we can put it here. If exists uh, equal, ah, I'm so let me let me check because I'm so bad with memory. Uh, I don't have it here. I will have it. Uh, sorry, but I'm a bit, I'm always put the wrong here, this one. Uh, it is like, you can put it with the equal, but it's a bit more hard to, to read. If, like you can go as as um, complex as you want, as you can see. But here, if you put uh, check if x is true, um, we run it. Uh, my new resume. It will run. Like it will. Uh, you will have the same output because the files exist. Like there is no problem. Let's see. Laptop. But if on the on the minus minus reads, I have a typo and I have a dot, like this path doesn't exist, and I run it, instead of going through all the analysis and at the end having whatever weird issue or like warning, uh, when you're talking about millions of, of uh, sequence, you have this no files, no files match. 
and that pattern because we are using the pattern, but you have this warning, like it just trigger as soon as it get this uh, channel from file first. We just check if it exists. If not, we just break the pipe and we don't continue with the analysis. It's quite uh, interesting to, to have as a sanity, uh, sanity check. Uh, yeah, we got. Then, yeah, let's start making things more, more, in, more complicated or more interesting. Now we have like the, the index and the quantification step. We have two steps. We have one index that is the one that we were uh, doing before with the salmon. And then, uh, the same from the reads, we check if it exists. We have it this, and then we make the quantification. Like we have the index from index uh, CH, that is this one, like this index CH is this one. And then from red pairs, that this one is this one. Like we're combining two inputs, okay? We have these two inputs, and then we call Salmon and make the quantification. Let's see what happens. Uh, let's go with just one. The thing is that uh, meanwhile, Nexo is running, like as I told you, like this red pairs, uh, like from pairs, it gives you the ID and the file. You can call it whatever you want, like pair ID, ID, whatever you want, but this value is the one that you will use inside the script one, it's this one, okay? And here's the same, file reads, you can put reads or you can put uh, reads and pairs or pair of reads. But this is the one that you will use here, like uh, read zero and read one. Okay. Okay. We have the quantification step done, as you can see. And let's see what uh, was the the command line, like to be sure. Like we copy this this identification, uh, this one. We copy, and if we make cut work and paste this one. With the tabulation, we'll go to the to the word directory, then command sh, and we know what uh, Nextflow runs. Nextflow make this call: salmon one thread one. We we go with got one and got two, okay? Because the input was a got. But to be sure that uh, what we will was was this. And if I'm not wrong, now we will label this one. Uh, Yeah, as I yeah, here I told you that uh, you have two elements, the per ID and the reads. As I told you, you can do whatever uh, you want. And now we can do with with uh, all the files, like instead of just with a uh, gut, this one. We will have the the same quantification for for all the input files, and as you can see, like here we run one of one, like and we run one of one. We only call index one and quantification just one. And here we will see that the index was cache, like because we call it here. And here we have one cache that is this call, and then we have one of one of three. Like it's running now the other the other um, tissues uh, quantification, okay? Okay, now we have everything. Like three of three and we catch one. That's kind of 33% uh, free free run. And yeah, next one is to, to apply, apply attack to, because here quantification, yeah, we have quantification number three, but we can make it uh, more un, uh, human readable. Like if here where we define the process, we put tech, tech yeah. We can call it a uh, quanti on a dollar, or we can call it the ID, par ID. That we don't need to make quantification because we already know that it's quantification, okay? We can call just on per ID. And if we, we run it again. We will see that mm, 
let's see. And why it's, maybe it's my laptop, it's kind of a burning and that's why it's slowing down the process. But, okay, quantification on gas, like kind of, it's just the last one. Uh, but if you check the index, like the log, you have everything. The thing is that before, instead of three of three, you have the three lines of the of the log of the ASCII. But yeah, new versions of Nextflow just kind of compress things to to make it more readable. But on uh, Nextflow Tower, you will see uh, on GAT, on Libs, on on LAN, like you will have everything. That kind of you have this kind of information if you if you need it. Then a publish here it's interesting too, like because now. Uh, we are like on this script. You have as output this um, file uh, per ID, but it's inside this uh, this path. Like it's here. Okay, it's here. Uh, you you will not go through all these uh, work directories to to find your results. You can define it here. Like publish here, and <coughs> sorry, because we define it here a param dot out here. I think it was like this. We can say that publish here out there slash quantity. Okay, we will save. We will save this uh, output in this folder we can have it the same it here if you want we can save this uh, index in another file like kind of intermediate uh, folders to have the intermediate files to have the the folder uh, yeah uh, save um let's resume it because we are able to resume Here, yeah, here we have where the out there will will go. And if we go to results, quantity, we have got information delivered on the land. Like, this structure is done by by Salmon, like this uh, land liver, it's done by Salmon. We are not uh, doing anything worth here, Salmon. We are we just define this quantity folder, and inside this folder, the output of of this process quantification, it save it here because we put quantification here. Okay, it's not, but uh, you can you can decide to to save kind of I'm I'm working with alignments and guide trees. Like sometimes you, we don't want the alignment file. We only need uh, to compute the 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 score, but the alignment by itself. It's useless for me because I'm doing benchmark. I just need uh, to to keep the the numbers. That's why I didn't save on publish dear the alignment. Like the alignment is keep it on this uh, w slash work slash where it pass. And on my on my results folder, I keep the numbers. I keep the the result from the benchmark. Uh, yeah, that's all. Then uh, if we go through script number five, it's this one. It's the same that we have before. We have our index, our quantification, and now we have a fast QC. Okay, uh, that's let's say what what we have. We have this input from red pairs channel that it's uh, this one. That it's the same that here, and the output it's it's the log. It's it's a log that we run this script. Okay. If we make a next flow run script five, we will have an issue. Like I'm just making the spoiler. We will have an issue uh, on um, next flow, let's say DSL one, like version one, not modules. On DSL two or modules, you don't have this issue. 
but uh, on the previous versions, you have this issue as uh, red per channel has been used twice. Like you cannot use the same channel, like you can have red per channel as an input here, as an input here, okay? Uh, it's not possible because let's say that we consume, we burn this channel. Once we we use it here on this quantification, we cannot uh, we cannot run it here. One of the of the reasons, or one of the to make it more clear, like we don't know if, if we burn the channel here or here, because it's in parallel. Like we are running this uh, fast QC and the quantification at the same moment, and you can let's say that you cannot have the same uh, channel split in in two if we define like this if we instead of the set you can make into and uh, like let let's say red pairs one and uh, red pairs pass q okay instead of the set we have the into then I just change the name, I like to make more easy to, to follow. And the fast QC has red pairs fast Q, and the quantification have the red pairs quant. Okay, it's like it's the same, the value of the channel is the same, but it they have different names. And if we run it, it will run without any any problems. But that's the thing to, to take into account. Like Nextflow used to complain, like use no complains every time that you use the same channel twice. But it's as easy as instead of set make an into and uh, dot semicolon here to to define different different names because sometimes you just the reads you will use in different uh, processes or the aligners or the whatever channel you will use more than one. And if you are wo working on DSL2 or modules, this is kind of uh, intrinsic. Like you don't need to define two two channels with like the same channel with two different names. Like e Nextflow will be able to to use the same channel name more than once. <coughs> you cannot use the same module more than once with the same name. You have kind of to put a nickname for the module. But you will see if you start with a DSL2, you will see and can is the same. It's kind of more or less the same. To, to be able to run in parallel, you have to have different names. As you can see here now, we run FastQC on GUT. Quantification, uh, we, we avoid, like we didn't put the tag here. We can put the tag. Quanti. Like we start having, like putting the name of the process, but at the end you don't need it because it's FastQC on GUT and you already know that, that, that it is process. Okay, and if I'm if I resume it, we can see that uh, we are able to run the read first in two different processes without any issue. Okay, explain it here: the set and like into is the set. Uh, this is quite interesting. The multi QC, it's a tool that. I don't use so much, but uh, it's it's from a guy from Sweden, and it's very useful. Like a lot of people on the community like uh, like this tool, and yeah, I don't. It's not I don't like it. I not use it. That that's a thing. But we'll see. I show you how how it looks like. I guess that if you are working like kind of a more well lab or more analytical than than me, you will always like this uh, quality control a uh, report and just think that there is a kind of a module or a process already done on nextflow that make this for for you and let's see if uh, i should need to uh, open the browser when it's done let me finish i, will. I think I, I will share now my my browser with the multi QC report. Let me uh, one second because I have to to change this uh, 
screen on this card. Change windows. Let's see if it No light. I think that the screen was already changed. That's the multi PC. That's the the output. It's not already done, but it's the output that Nextflow gives it to you. Like it gives you a multi QC report with some general statistics. Like yeah, you have some tutorial of of uh, of this uh, tool, but you have the statistics. Like you can have the plot of uh, duplicates of DC content uh, aligned. Then the salmon statistics because we use salmon. Then we have the control here, like to to know the fragment length. And the thing is that you can check, like uh, if you are familiar with GitHub, this kind of a uh, continuous integration, it's kind of similar. Like you have uh, the number of uh, samples that pa that pass or not. Like here, six over six pass the the control. Uh, yeah, it will be here. Yeah, six over six. But yeah, you have the sequence quality score. Like you can, I think it's quite interesting, and you can easily see if you're going in the good direction or the direction that you expect it or not. I don't say good or or bad, but it's the one the result that you expect it or not. Because sometimes uh, a score on a benchmark it's it's okay, but it's relative of of, of the full picture. And this multi QC gives you this this picture uh, as I as I understand. Okay, like see here for example the GC content. We know that on the on the files of uh, of uh, the ones get the the okay and the and the sure not and this is the the plot. You can export the plot. You can have the counts. Like it's kind of a GC plot. It's a uh, I think it, it's plotly. I think it's a plotly. It's a GC plot moving to to HTML, and <coughs> you have the end content. Uh, yeah, sequence length distribution, and the good thing is that if you think that you need another uh, quality control that it's not already deployed, you can ask to the guys, or you can implement yourself. Like it's an open community, and yeah, I need another uh, quality control. They will be happy that you implement your own. Uh, at the end, it's just a way to to get the the numbers and make the plot that you that you want. It's quite easy in that sense that it's just well structured and to know what what do you want or what do you need. And I think that everyone is happy with with uh, this QC multi QC and the project is growing exponentially. Let's say that it, every day has more 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 users and I think it's very interesting, kind of like to make the screenshots and send to your supervisor or to your collaborator. Okay, guys, I have this analysis and this is the the result. And you don't have to fight with them with tables or numbers. Like you have it here, like uh, Nextflow, let's say, or multi QC, make it for you. Like uh, it's uh, a site lab, uh, it's a uh, it's, uh, Phil who make this. And yeah, you can export it, you can save it, uh, you can rename it, you can do whatever you want. And I don't know, it's very interesting. And you have everything just in, in one click. Let's go back to. Uh, uh, here, I think I'm back on the code. Okay, yeah, that's the multi QC. It's done, and I have some weird configuration on my computer that sometimes I get these uh, statistics, but it's something weird. I think because I've been playing with different versions of Nextflow, sometimes I have it, sometimes no, and I think that by default you should have this kind of. Uh, Resume like of uh, kind of a st a statistics of, of your run, but <coughs> yes, that's the multi QC report, and it's a uh, six. It just multi QC, like we have it uh, um, the multi QC from everything, all, all the files that we that we have before, and. You just call multi QC and you have all the the the, the quality control. Another uh, feature, no, another yeah flag. Let's say it is uh, minus mode. Uh, yeah, sorry, I said that someone was talking. 
you can have a copy or replace because this mode copy means that this uh, this file this output file is in in this directory like a uh, ls word we have it here multi -QC report and we have on the on the results like we have here kind of we copy the 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 file from one side to another one you cannot see the proper screen okay uh, Oh, like. Did you see the screen now? Okay, sorry. Yeah, uh, I was talking about, about multi QC. Uh, at the end, uh, you can have the multi QC as a process. It just grab everything that you have, like from the quant um, CH and uh with multi qc generate everything and i was talking about this minus uh mode copy uh, it's because uh you keep the you keep the file on the on the directory like is the directory of the of the process multi qc we have the multi qc report here and we have it on the results folder like on the results folder we have the multi qc report if uh instead of the number six Six. Yeah. Instead of copy, we put move. We will move from this uh, working directory to uh, to move to the results folder. Or if we don't put anything, we will have a a link to to the work directory. I will say that never remove things for this from this work uh, structure because it's where cache is uh, it's uh, computed and it's generated. But if you don't have so many space on your local disk or whatever, don't put copy. Like if you don't put copy, if you all, if you make like like this, uh, you will have a link to from your published dir to like from the results folder to this work blah blah blah. But you will not have duplicated the file. Okay, like the copy, it's okay to to have to have here the fold the file if you need to open on on the browser or send through email to everyone. Check. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's the multi QC. I invite you to go through the documentation and to multi QC is in NF Core. And it's very interesting to read and and share some some doubt with, with these guys. And yeah, to to continue, we have this uh, workflow on complete. It's kind of a, a introspection of an X flow. I'm not sure if they call it introspection, but uh, yeah, we can call it an introspection. It's kind of uh, to know about next flow events, okay? And then here we have uh, once we have everything done like all the processes that we have made during this this time, we can call this uh, function workflow on complete. And we have uh, this time if it's kind of, of copy paste, like every everyone have this this statement on, on, on the pipelines with different con content, but it's always the same. Like if a workflow dot success, it's true, like everything was as expected, you will have this, uh, this message and if not you will have uh, oops something wrong okay and then in this case interesting because you will know where the multi is it's uh, place it let's say let's see um script seven we'll run this okay with the script seven it's the one that we are checking and uh it's kind of this statistic that i showed you before but uh Easily and where you can follow what are the the files. Uh, let's see if it's finished. But yeah, it will go later. You can you can try to follow this tutorial by your own. It's on GitHub, and if you have any doubts, don't 
don't hesitate to send an email or contact to Discord, and we can try to solve your issues or or doubts. Uh, meanwhile, it's finishing. That at the end, it's the same, but uh, we'll have this kind of a last sentence. If you, we don't want, okay, yeah, here we have done. Open the print report in your browser, and here's the 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 link to to the multi report. But I don't know you, but my group is um, fully computational, and we at CRG in, in Barcelona we work in front of the bit. Now no, because we are doing telework. But our our lab is in front of the bit, and we always want to to be somewhere else, not in the lab, and have kind of a notification when the job is done. Like you can do your non PhD life meanwhile the pipeline is running. And we have this uh, minus n uh, flag. As I told you, just one minus because it's a next flow uh, flag. And let's say that you can have a next flow run skip blah 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 minus capital N and the email. And like it said that you have to have your kind of your uh, how do you say your server configured blah blah blah. But it used to to be like easily configured. Like it's by default, it's already configured. Okay, let's see. I'm just waiting that I get the email and I will share my screen. <coughs> yeah, it's going to servers and it will take uh, uh, some time. But it's just kind of a, a functionality that uh, you can do different different things, different tasks. Meanwhile, you have your uh, three days pipeline running on the background. And when it's done, you will get an email with the information about the, the execution of the script. I'm just waiting to get the, the email. We can continue. Meanwhile, let's see. Uh, I'm just checking the, the inbox. Not yet. Okay. As soon as I get it, I will jump to the to the screen. Then another interesting thing is uh, the custom scripts. I told you that the Nextflow is a polyglot, and you can run Python, R, Bash, uh, Java, whatever you want. But until now, we only run Bash. Like at the end, here we only run run Bash. Then another feature. Uh, I'm just. Uh, I don't know if someone is so workflow on complete. Uh, so workflow on complete is um, there is a question. Workflow on complete is run it after the completion of the entire pipeline. Yes, like uh, this work on, on complete. There is workflow on complete workflow on error, and I think there is another one. It's when uh, the workflow execution is done. Uh, here on this tutorial, it's, it's to kind of send this this fancy uh, sentence, but what I was using it for is to make the CSV. Like I have a lot of single files with uh, scores, like the TC score, and in the incomplete, what they what they do is I just grab all the TC scores and I make the CSV with all the TC scores. Like it's a a kind of a function that it will run just once, and it will be once the 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 pipeline is done. Like the easier and the most common is this kind of incomplete uh, sentence, but on my case, I used to 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 make CSVs, kind of to resume, to to make a uh, tables, or to it's not like it's not um, it was not generated or it was not created, for example, to run error scripts on completion, but you can try it, like it it works. Like the people will say that it's not the 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 main functionality of incomplete to, for example, once you have everything done, have a error script doing the tables or doing the plots, you can do it. Like uh, you will have your your pipeline and at the end an error script that will generate all the all the all the plots. You can do it this on this workflow incomplete. It means I think that it answers the, the question. Uh, I see I don't get email. But we will. Uh, I will continue just one second. 
Yes. Uh, these uh, custom scripts, like we can, we can have our our own scripts uh, placed on. It have to have a structure like we have. We need to have inside our folder. We need uh, like inside our project. We have to have a folder called a bin. A next flow. Hey, a folder, not a file. Uh, delete. Yes. And next flow will will look for uh, scripts inside this this folder. Uh, if we follow this, uh, this fastqc process that we have here, like we have this a uh, fastqc process, okay, that we make this uh, make these fastqc logs, and then we call this fastqc. Like it's the same that that here but we need to kind of tune the the inputs because here we are using kind of a pure bash and we have to define the inputs like here <coughs> we were doing kind of uh, simple ideas and reads and in this tutorial we are using the dollar one and dollar two but uh, if i'm not wrong i was running at least on templates you can run minus reads uh, dollar reads and it will and it will go. But if we copy this into the bin, like uh, not this one, into the bin, okay, we have a folder called bin. We make a new file and we call this file fastqc.sh. We paste this and we save it, okay? And yeah. We have to say it's not seven bin fastq. Okay. Um now yeah, instead of having these uh, lines here, we can have fastq C. Um yeah, we send this. Like we send the variables here, but if I'm not wrong, at least on the new versions, uh, you can like next like the this uh, bash script already can can get the the values. Okay, let's try if it works. Uh, run seven minor resume. Yes. Like instead of having here the code, we here we have the, the script. It's a, a good option, as I told you, not to have one million lines of code, but it's a kind of, you need to to have your bin folder clean. Like, uh, I, like I don't like using this uh, bin uh, strategy. I prefer the template because on, yep, uh, yeah, I, uh, let me, like you see why. I said because I didn't put the SH. Yeah. Not really it's intelligent, but not so much. Like, because by default or like uh, normally uh, slash bin, there is a lot of trash and a lot of old scripts and a lot of uh, things that you are not using anymore and you keep here the, the script. And for me, it's a bit dangerous, this strategy of putting everything on, on the bin. The good thing is that if you have a different process with a fast QC step, like let's say that here we have, I don't know, I'm just inventing a eh? process, process fast QC, let's say uh, beta, because um, instead of uh, doing on sample IDs, we are, instead of reads, we are doing on other stuff, we can use the same script and we only need to maintain this one like if we change the line of code here it's okay it's not like both processes will take advantage of of this but uh, i don't know it's up to you and if you use like a great power has a great responsibility and if you keep your bin folder clean it's okay but yeah just to show that if you make this a bin folder on on your next flow directory uh next flow has kind of the path to, to the bin and you can define here the the scripts to to run 
without any issue. You have to have the 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 rights like the CH mod and properly installed and configured. But uh, that's all. Uh, then if we go for the it's not here, like before going to the executors, I want to show you the templates. Let's see. Like I'm just going to my own like uh, script, okay? That this is a multi sequence alignment step. Uh, as, as, as I don't know if you are familiar with uh, multi sequence alignments, but first you have to generate trees, uh, a guide tree, okay? And as I showed you before, I use this strategy. Uh, like first, I, I'm using this when because you can input the guide trees to the pipeline. Like I want to input the file. But if I don't input the file, I want to generate the file. That's why I'm using this parameter tree. Like if the user input the trees, this step will be skipped. But if you don't produce, if you don't uh, introduce as an input the guide trees, uh, this uh, process will be triggered up and will produce the, the trees. And what I have it here, it's called a script template. And then I have on my, on my directory uh, a folder. Uh, templates and as you can see I'm here the path to the template that I have to to generate okay like I have three it's a folder like it's here and then these templates these three methods it's the method of the tree that I want to to compute as you can see I have a lot of trees to compute but on my main script here it's just two lines like it's easy to to understand uh, it's okay it's like I want to generate trees. I have the IDs, the sequence from sequence channel. I have different three methods. And <coughs> what I have, I will call the, the trees, like the, the templates concerning the three methods, okay? Then if I want to make a, you know, a neighbor joining tree, it's generate tree neighbor joining, and I have this command line. I have this command line of tea coffee making the tree. But if instead of a neighbor joining tree, uh, I go out. I wait to make a math uh, FFTNS13. Uh, yeah, it's a math FFTNS13. Like I'm doing a math tree or I'm doing a FAMSA tree. Like I have different common lines, but on the on the main, you you don't need to take care. Like you if I'm here, you only see that we I'm going to a template. And for me, it's, more clear and more easy to uh, to maintain because I maybe this uh, uh, FAMSA tree, this FAMSA tree just changed the command line instead of minus GT, uh, now it's minus GT underscore export. And I make the export and I make the change it's here and nothing else. Like uh, anything else will notice that uh, the command line has to be changed. Okay. Uh, another thing, it's not on the on the um, on the tutorial, but I can define the container here. I can say container, container, uh, and now I can define a container for um, trees. If I will have a container, like that, will be kind of the structure of of Docker Hub: username and the container and the tag. But I can have a container just to generate the trees, and another container to make the the regressive aligner, and another container to blah blah blah. But I I just need one container that supports all the templates, and that's all. Like I don't need any specific software uh, outside this uh, three generation three, three generation step. It makes you to build uh, Docker containers very lightweight and very easy to, to maintain because you only have the software that you need. Like it's not that you need to maintain 30,000 30, millions of software and the versions. You only need to maintain the ones that, that you are working on. Uh, then this is kind of uh, clear. Let's go back to this uh, uh, tutorial. Uh, now the executors that I told you that we can run uh, from local to 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 the cluster easily. Let me check if I have the connection on. No, it just I'll close the connection. 
I'm just connecting to my uh, CRG connection. Let me know. One second. Uh, one second. Uh, one second. It's trying to connect, and I will show you. Like we have been running things locally, like on my machine, because uh, on the Nextflow config, it is folder. Yes, on the Nextflow config, we don't have anything defined here as a executor. And we didn't send any flag to to on the on the command line. NTS. Okay. Let me share the screen to change the windows. Okay. I can do. I think that you can see the this screen. Okay. This is the cluster of my of my uh, institution, and I'm on the folder. The same folder of of the of the tutorial. The only thing is that uh, on the next flow clear on the next flow config, I have this. Okay, I I make a profile like I open a profile block and I define CRG and I make this. Okay, I include the config file inside the conf folder. And it's called CRG config. Then let's say what we have inside this conf. Okay, this is a configuration to run things on on the cluster on on my institution cluster. Okay, was was I as I told you before, uh, these parameters kind of uh, to infer as a meta metadata uh, where which config I'm, I'm using. This is tower. This is the graphic interface that I will show you later. And this interesting thing, like a process, okay? Process executor CRG, like it's the configuration to run things on on the CRG institution. Max retry, like the pipeline will retry up to seven times because maybe it's uh, more intense than what I expected. And I start with uh, my group uh, queue. The first four times, if not, I'm going because it's it's uh, it's free. Or else you don't have to pay as a member of the group. Then I'm going through the long queue and then to the memory. Like every time that I fail, I'm just uh, changing the queue if it's needed. And then we can specify labels, okay? Process low, process medium, high, or long, with uh, defining different uh, CPUs, memory, or time. And if the the command line. Yeah. Clear of uh, the pipeline is next flow, next flow run three, uh, three, let's say. It was this one, no? The, the command line was next flow run script NF. Now I only need to make a, a profile, profile TRG, and I'm running the same script. Uh, the same script as uh, on my on my machine, I'm running on on the cluster of my on my institution. Uh, and let me, yeah, let me show you. Like it means that I don't need to change anything. Uh, well, yes, I don't know the script number three, but uh, if it was something using Salmon. I was using Docker and I'm not able to use Docker on my on my institution. Then I need to put with Singularity, and it runs like it it's running the same script and the same environment in the cluster and of on on my local machine. Like I'm just converting Docker to Singularity, and I'm defining which strategy I want to to add resources to my institution. And this allow me to let's change the screen again. I'm changing the screen all the time. I'm sorry. Next flow tower. That's one thing. It's um, I like it. 
that's the can I think that you can see now yeah next flow tower screen that's the the call that we we made okay just now like uh it's almost time uh just we just made it now something go wrong because there is no running things I think that I'm missing something yes I'm missing that the the files are on my uh, no okay I will check it later I just make this before you to it's it will be in an in an next step but n just for you to to see how how it works uh here we have a uh, daddy that's the unique name for its run uh this is uh, the content that we that we run we have this uh, docker converted to singularity and we run on on crg profile and it goes everything fine it took three minutes it uh, make a, just a dot 26 gig of memory uh, we read six uh, 0 0.06 gigabytes and if we run on cloud here we have estimated cost and i think that it's interesting it's like the utilization like <clears throat> we want or i want at least to have as close as 100 percent as possible it means that we are optimizing making a good uh, use of the resources and here we have as i told you the tag that we have one the tag of this one and we can see like the command line, the status, the word directory, and the, the metrics. Okay. We have 30 seconds, but it was just one second on, on CPU. We use this container on this queue. Uh, what else? This is the peaks of memory, if you are interested on memory, that it's fine, but you can see here, like you can, you can see here, uh, that's, that job was too, too small. Mm, but for example, you can see here the the usage of CPU for process like uh, a dynamic aligner. It's taking more CPU than generate uh, generate dynamic uh, file or the metrics. And you have a process to to plot the metrics. And you have <coughs> here the the plots of a memory, uh, RAM allocated, whatever you. I don't know why it's not working this one, but you have kind of an overview of of all your jobs, and and I think it's interesting to to plan and to to see if you need to escalate uh, on a higher queue or not. And for, uh, yeah, here you have the tags. This hash is the the directory where you can find on on the on the cluster the the, the files. And uh, one thing that yeah, this is like. 40, 700 um, process uh, succeeded, zero cache and no failed ones. And you have here like all the history of your of your process. Like I don't know uh, this one. I think it's still this one. Uh, this one. Like yes, it's almost one week. A lot of them fail it because the the strategy, and you can see why they fail it and like how many attempts. Uh, here attempt number one. And then you will attempt number six, blah blah blah, and you will have everything. And another interesting thing is, as I show you on the on the presentation, that you can uh, compute. I don't have anything here, but from like I don't have any Amazon Cloud defined here, but uh, you can launch your pipelines from 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 Amazon Cloud from from here. And another thing, I know, yeah, here. You can have a kind of a, a GitHub uh, integration. Like you can, you can, you can make that every time that you make a, a commit on GitHub, you run a, a how do you say a continuous integration test on Tower. Like it's already let's say already implemented on on GitHub. It is a GitHub actions or continuous inter integration with Travis. <coughs> but with this. Like the the good thing is that you can run on Amazon. Like you can make th that your continuous integration running on on Amazon. Uh, and what else? We will we'll be back on on the on the tutorial because we are almost finishing. Uh, no, but uh, this one. I know that there is a lot of things and I talk too much, but 
I want to more or, less, more or less explain everything. These executor steps, uh, let me see if you are seeing, yeah. These executor steps is the one more or less that I explained to you on the, on the um, config files. Like you can have a Slurm, SGE, uh, Kubernetes. Uh, you can define the, the profile for your institution. And then this, this will depend on, on your institution ability, like how many clusters, how many nodes you have and the memory that you can ask for, for it. Uh, let's, yes. Yeah. These, uh, the labels, like uh, this um, exercise 9.2 will go on script seven. Um, let's say that this uh, fast QC uh, has uh, is more compute intense. Uh, wait, I will go to my own code. Uh, in that I can show you is you one second. Oh, no, it's not this one. Um, I'm sorry. One second. But the idea is that you can. can I do it? Like for example, here I have defined a container for this uh, for this aligner. And um, you don't have labels. Yeah, yeah. Here on the blast p, I have a process blast p. This process is computed is a intense comp in computed uh, high computing request. Then I make a label asking for a process high. And then on the next flow config, I'm defining uh, the config process high. This process will ask directly, like uh, CPU is 12 per task attempt. Like it will ask for 12, 24 so far. And memory is the same, 84 gigs for each task attempt. Like uh, you can define like in this granularity. Like you can go on this on this sense that asking for for things in in so much detail, uh, this is the one the nine point two like making the the levels. Uh, then the Amazon batch, the the easiest thing will be go through the documentation because it's changing easily every month. Let's say every time that Amazon is making kind of easy or more clear, uh, next will have kind of update the things that they ask, but at the end, you need to define the the bucket that you that you want to use, like the the folder where you have the, your input files. It's a S3 bucket. <coughs> the execution is uh, Amazon Batch. Uh, that this is the demo, and then the container. Like that's why we we using containers because you can have the same environment everywhere, and the region. Like you have to be aware that the the region have to be in the same region of your bucket, if I'm not wrong. Before it was like this, like your word dir, dir bucket have to have the same region as as this one, okay? But it means that, uh, for example, if you have one thousand sequ one thousand jobs to to do, you can make the your test on your local machine, then go through one thousand sequence on your like one thousand task on your on your HPC cluster, and then up to one million on the Amazon cloud if you want. Like just changing this uh, local uh, Slurm or MSC batch, and just changing this process executor, you will run your your analysis whatever you you want. But it's just uh, more clear if you go through the documentation because uh, things change a bit every every round of of uh, new versions. Uh, these profiles, I already explained you how I use the profiles. Like here, you have the cluster, the batch. Like you can define uh, batch and cluster, and you can make the minus profile. Like here, you will you will use next flow run blah 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 minus profile cluster, and you will run with these specifications. And instead of cluster, you make a batch. You will run these specifications like just changing the this uh, flag. You will move from one from one executor to another one. 
And finally, because I think that we are almost done, running pipelines from GitHub. Like uh, there is a lot of uh, pipelines, then uh, you can just make uh, this call Nextflow run Nextflow IO because it's the like user and pipeline. And you will, I'm, thinking, I'm not sure if it will go fast or not, but let's try. And finally, because it's almost time, I want to show you. I want to show you the NF core. Let me check. Uh, wait, I just missed. Yeah, it's, as you can see, it's pulling the the Reniasec, uh, pipeline. Meanwhile, I want to. Let's, I don't know how many times I, sh I change the screen. To I think that you are seeing now the the NF Core uh, uh, website. It's a community that are doing um, how do you say uh, manually curated pipelines. As uh, as you can as I told you before, if you kind of you are scared or like you want to use other ones code before, you can check the pipelines that they have. They have a lot of pipelines like. Um, there is a kind of um, a structure of for all of them. For example, this one we make this one very fast for for the SARS COP uh, pandemia. Uh, and if we click here, we can see like uh, there is some version that's the the link to to the pipeline. But then there is kind of information, and you can see how it works. Like you can download uh, sample for SLA. You can like you will make the red QC. You can have the you will use the Bauti, the sum tools, the P card. Like it's explaining a bit what's uh, what's going on on the pipeline and how it you how you can use it. Uh, things that you can use uh, to be here on the NF core. You it should be able to run on Docker and Singularity and Conda. Like it's uh, prepared for for everything. Um, yeah, I think it's quite interesting to to check if if some of the pipelines are useful for for you, and like kind of why to reinvent the wheel. If it's already done, you can reuse the code and implement on on your own way, or like adding things that that you need. But I think that there is a lot of of effort here, and you can collaborate if if you if you want and if you feel comfortable. Like uh, a lot of institutions are kind of putting their own pipelines here for uh, other core facilities to use and collaborate between core facilities. But there is a lot of, of, of work here and a lot of examples like, I don't know, it's a nice fusion, but we can go here. Like I didn't check this pipeline before, but you can, the good thing is that the structure is the same for everything, for all the pipelines. Like you have kind of some help, but then uh, the code, yeah. Goes, goes here. The go goes here. You can take uh, kind of examples of how people solve issues. Like this is when that we talked before. Then uh, this how to define uh, optional parameters. Like you can take a lot of ideas. This optional truth because some outputs can be optional or not because by default Nextflow is expecting all the outputs to be generated. If not, it writes an error. If you have this optional true, it means that some, like you can produce this file or not. Like it, it's not mandatory. Like you can just um, surfer through these uh, um, the repositories and try to find ideas and to see how people uh, work work on on this. Okay, just to to you to have this kind of resource. And going back to the code that we are almost done. Uh, pa, pa, pa. Yeah, Conda, Bioconda. Uh, I have some issues on my laptop, uh, Conda, uh, because I have a lot of version of Conda, I think, and it's not uh, working properly. But you can have, uh, you should have this kind of embol YAML. It's the, the environment for Conda, and where you define the channels that uh, you want to use and the packages that you want to use. In that case, uh, we are using the default Bioconda and Conda for can channels. And then we are using Salmon, FastQC, and MultiQC. They are the same that we are using on Docker. 
and uh, using the Wisconda, uh, Wisconda like this uh, flag, Wisconda, you will run the same analysis, but using con instead of Docker or Singularity. Like you will have, you can have Wisconda with Docker or with Singularity. Okay, Wisconda, uh, you you can define on the next on the next low config you can define this uh, this uh, file or you can just put after the the flag but it's a uh, an option to to run uh, with different uh, with different containers technologies uh, yeah that's all on this um yeah like you can the other flags that you can have on on nextflow it is with docker that we already know with report, with trace, with timeline, and with DAC. Like with report, we'll generate kind of a multi QC report. Uh, with trace, uh, we'll make a, a, um, a trace file for kind of a log file. And the timeline will plot the, the timeline. Let's see if we can have it because I didn't get the email or I don't know why. Of next flow, I don't have internet. Let me check if I have the report from next flow that we asked before. I have some issues with next flow reports. I used to have kind of a spam after using so much. But yes, that's kind of all the flags that, that you can have. And um, yeah, here it's explained, yeah. I go, uh, report HTML, then the trace txt is kind of a log file, and the timeline it's uh, it's a report with uh, the where each each um, process starts. And that's all. Let me see, let me see if it generated. And for me, I just want to to see if I can show you the report of Nextflow. And um, I think that it's almost time. Uh, Nextflow here, okay. This is an old one, an old, an old report, but I think it's, you can see kind of all the information that you, you have. Uh, I only need, I think that it's already sharing, yes. That's a next a workflow competition email. Okay, the most important is this word: succeed or, or error. That's what you you need to to know. But that's how it looks like. Uh, you have uh, this uh, run name. It used to be useful uh, if you have if you run multiple times the metrics and and kind of to see what's going on. I used to keep this uh, run run name because it's unique. Then you have this uh, command line that you run. Uh, as you can see, there's the main file, the profiles like CRG singularity test, uh, the minus n, and the background. You have some metrics like where do you launch, when it finish, uh, CPU times, how many tasks, where are the the files, and kind of the tower. But before tower, we don't have tower before. We use this kind of report. But at the end, the most important is just having this uh, this word on the on the header of the email to know if it's a uh, succeed or there is an error. Uh, and yeah, going back to the code. Okay. That's, uh, let me results. <laughs> results. Okay. Yeah, that's that the results. Uh, what are the? I don't know what I say. Default. Okay, that the uh, report HTML. Okay, that's the trace. The trace you have the ID, the the hash, and the process and the tag that we put completed. Before we was we were running we were using this, but now. With uh, my with the email or with the tower, kind of we don't use it so much because you have this on tower and it's more 
more easy to to read. And let me open the timeline because it could be interesting for kind of to share with the with the group and your group leader. You can see, I think that yes, you can see here kind of uh, how the job was was going on, like the parallelization, the multi QC. Like you can see who takes your, your time and who now. And if you have more than one sample, you you will see that here you have a lot of uh, fast QC one over the other, and you will see the how parallel uh, next law works. And for example, uh, this. Uh, quantif quantification is going meanwhile the fast QC is, is computed and the multi QC is just waiting until the fast QC is done. Like uh, this quantification is it's done meanwhile the fast QC is computed because there is no relation between these two processes. But, but the multi QC needs to the fast QC to be to be done to to generate the quality control. Uh, and then I don't know if there is another timeline, a report. Let me open the report. Yeah. yeah, this looks like the the one from the email. The email and the on the tower. Like this is report.html that it's generated with a with a report flag. But as I told you, nowadays uh, kind of we are not using this. Why I'm not using this? Because I'm using tower and I have this already on on the browser i don't need to to generate a file and then open the file um blah 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 because the file is in the cluster and i'm i cannot open the browser on the cluster uh, that's why just using tower it will make the the same and um, going back to this i think that uh, yeah dockers we don't have time if i'm not wrong but if you want to see an example of docker i don't know if you are familiar with docker or not uh, for example um, docker R. No, Chris. that's how a docker file looks like you need to to define the from like from which uh, from which uh, mm, base image you want to start. I want to start with a Debian image, like a, and a GC distribution. The maintainer, uh, now it's, there is a, a new syntax and it's kind of a label, like it's not, that's an old, old version. But what you have, it's like, you have to this uh, keyword run and you put kind of the command line that you will put on the, on the, on the bus, like on the, yeah, on the terminal. Then you have another run, then like you go run by run, let's say. <coughs> and yeah, this is quite easy, like easy, like it, this is quite, uh, and then you define the environmental variables. But this is not so, so long because I'm splitting the dockers uh, depending of what they want to do. Like I have this one that it's a bit longer and more complex because yeah, I'm installing, I'm installing Blast, uh, the PDB, I'm installing Cluster Omega. Like this file, this Docker, it's uh, quite bigger than than the other one. But because this is doing a lot of, uh, it's using a lot of software. Meanwhile, the other one was just to compute guide trees. That's that's why I use, I prefer to to split um, Docker's Docker files, and you can use one for for each process. We can, I think that we should skip this part. But as I told you, if this is online, this is on GitHub. And if you have any issue uh, following it, just contact me and we can, I can help you without any, any further problem. This kind of some introduction that I told you the from, maintainer, and the run. <coughs> and then to build the images, Docker build. Uh, if the file is not called Docker file, you need to. To put the minus t my image. If not, it's Docker file dot, and it's okay. And uh, yeah, adding more software, and then you can go inside the container and run Salmon if you need it. And last but not least, 
if you want to debug things like without using Nextflow, like first you need to know that your container your container runs on the way that you expect it, like the, the sub inside your container runs. And that's why you need to go first to your container and check that it works. That's why you you will you will use this to kind of to no not this one. Uh, this one, yeah, minus minus volume. Like you will attach this file to the container to to be able to run inside your container because your container is isolated and there is only the things that you define on the Docker file. Like you will not have uh, input files if you not if you didn't define it on the receipt. But you can put this, this minus minus volume and kind of connect your local host, like your local machine, with with the container and and share files to to the bug. Finally, you will need to to upload your your Docker image to Docker Hub to to run on with Nextflow if if it, like if you're running on Amazon or somewhere else that the on your local machine you can run without pushing on on Docker Hub. But if you're running on the cluster or on on the cloud, you will need to to push your image to Docker Hub. Here it's all the steps. It's quite quite easy. And the resources, as I told you, Nextflow documentation is the Bible. Like you will find almost everything there. Like I just explained a few things by in these two hours, but you will find everything. And if not, just ask. But it's almost uh, almost there. Everything. Then this Nextflow patterns is quite interesting because it's kind of workaround solutions. Like people that you can go if they don't kick me out, I can try to go. <laughs> like people that have a problem before you, they already find a solution that how to how to fix it, and we just share. Like uh, for example, that's I'm on the next flow patterns. I, I told you. Uh, for example, uh, what I told you before, optional input. Uh, how to make an, an optional input? Then we define this this um, this uh, line here. And we it's kind of make a filter, and if the op it exists, we will use this one. Is what we want, and, and if not exist, it's no file because here we define no file. It will be empty. Like it's kind of solution that people optional input. I know I'm always with optional input because it took me a while. Optional input outputs. It's what we saw before. Optional true. Like there is a lot of problems that people on the community uh, was already fighting with and kind of solutions of, of all of them. I don't know, uh, files per path, uh, because it's, uh, uh, yeah, from path. Uh, you you will see a lot of uh, groups, I don't know. There is a lot of, uh, look, this this map to make the, the groups, uh, to make the group of the channel, because the reads, you will have a key and file. Now this is kind of automatically like it was like next already it's doing but for you now but before you need to to define this every time and here you can find I don't know uh, a lot of things a lot of issues that uh, yeah this is failing because you put exit exit one and if not it will it will go you have a lot of examples and a lot of, uh, of issues and problems that people face uh, before you and. And the solution that kind of the community uh, agreed to to take. And yeah, Kali needs kind of an example uh, to to best practice for GATK and then F core. I think that that's all um, for my side. I don't know if you want to ask something or or to you have any doubts, anything else. But I'm quite happy to to answer and to to help if it's possible. I will just stop sharing my screen, I guess. Yes, thank you very much, Edgar, for today's seminar. It was very interesting and really a lot of material, but uh, it is recorded and then it will be available on our YouTube channel so everybody can come back to the seminar think, and uh, think it over again and try the things uh, at home. Uh, and if you think that the Docker part uh, 
was a little bit too fast. Uh, you need, don't need to worry. Uh, we will have a Docker seminar in September. So you can stay tuned and uh, look at our social media. Uh, while our next the seminar uh, next week uh, will be devoted to the introduction of statistics by German Demidov. So again, we invite all of you uh, to join us next week. And once again, thank you very much, Edgar, for today's great seminar. You're welcome. It 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 was a pleasure. Um, yeah, it's nice to if you can follow the Docker seminar. It's quite interesting because, uh, yeah, world is going in that way. Like uh, we are going on on containers, and Docker has his own limitations, but there is a lot of of strategies to go through. And for me, it's incredible that I can work from home, and things will work as expected, or I can go to Varsovia and things will still go in as expected, thanks to to Docker and thanks to to containers. And I think that Nextflow is a, a good solution. There is uh, more solutions, but I think it's a, a good solution to orchestrate all these uh, all these pieces. So thank you. It was also a pleasure for us to listen to you and to, to be able to get uh, such a lot of knowledge from you. You're welcome. As I told you, if anyone wants to start playing with Nextflow and there is an issue or any problem, just go to the guitar, git, guitar channel or here in Discord, I will be available to, to solve some issues or some problems if any one of the attendants have, have a, one problem. <laughs>